All right, so in this video, we're going to look at meter just a little bit. Some of you might be having trouble figuring out the meter of a poem and also figuring out how to write the meter of the poem. So when you write it, you just kind of reverse what the meter is. So we're going to look at two poems here and just figure out basically how to understand what a rhyme scheme is and how to spot the meter. Like I've already given you a video on meter, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. But take a look at this one. When I consider how my light is spent by John Milton, I, I'm putting this in front of you and I double spaced it because of what I'm going to do with it. But I take a look at this one, I'm like, okay, it looks kind of boxy, but what is it? My first thing is I'm going to look and see just how many lines it is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, it's got 14 lines. Now, if you have a handy dandy cheat sheet for, for poetry forms, and you can look one up on Google, those of you in the class can just go to the, the cheat sheet that's on the weekly page. You can already see 14 it's a pretty good strong signal that it's a sonnet, but sonnet has a couple of requirements. So one, a traditional sonnet that is, it's a couple of requirements. One, it's 14 lines, it's got a certain rhyme scheme and it's got a certain meter. So a sonnet, each line traditionally has iambic pentameter. That means each line should have 10 syllables. So I'm gonna count that out first. Before I do the meter, I just count out just to make sure it's got 10 syllables. When I consider how my light is spent. All right, 10 syllables there, air half my days in this dark world and wide. All right, I have another 10 syllables there. So I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty promising. Let me just try to go through here and do the meter really quickly. So if you remember iambic pentameter, pentameter means there are five iams per line. So an iam is a basic foot in meter where you have unstressed stress. So I should have unstressed stress repeating for five times. There might be a little variation. That's okay. Sometimes you want to do three or four lines just to make sure. But I'm going to go ahead and do this and my computer will probably recorrect things because it doesn't, it doesn't like just, yeah, there you go. It's putting periods. When I consider consider how and I go back up there, how my light is spent. All right, so there we go, 10 syllables. And look, if I look at this, there's one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot. Classically iambic pentameter. So I'm feeling pretty strong about a sonnet at this point. So I'm gonna erase that. So I've got iambic pentameter here, 10 syllables. Each line has 10 syllables. You don't really vary on that in a traditional sonnet. And you got this. Okay, so I'm thinking, Clearly it's a sonnet. The sonnet's got two more requirements that you really have to pay attention to. One is in rhyme and one is in turn and bolta. I'll explain that in a minute, but how do we spot in rhyme? So if I look at the last word in the line, which is how rhyme works, I use the alphabet to help me out. So spent, all right? So that's gonna be my first rhyme. So I'm gonna write A, wide. Wide and spent, they don't match. They don't rhyme, so I'm gonna put a B here. The wide and high does, so that's the same rhyme. So I'm gonna use a B again. So I just put an alphabetic letter for the same rhyme and I repeat it. So if I saw spent way down here at the end, like something rhymed with it, I'd put an A there too, anywhere in the point. But now I have bent, bent and spent rhyme. So I have A again. Present, bent, spent, those rhymes. So I'm gonna put an A here again. Chide, wide, and hide, wait, those rhyme. Denied, also rhymes. So I'm gonna put B again and prevent rhymes with present and spent. Right now, I can already tell you, you know, this is going to be an Italian sonnet because if I look at the basic sonnet forms, traditional sonnet forms, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, that's how an Italian sonnet, the first eight lines go. The, the English sonnet, the more traditional or Shakespearean sonnet, sometimes it's called, it goes A, B, A, B. So I know this is not that automatically sounds like an Italian one. An Italian one, the last six lines can vary. The most common is C, D, E, C, D, E, but there can be variations on it. So I'm going to look at this one. I'm like, need. Well, need doesn't rhyme with deny to prevent, so I need to put a C there. Best doesn't rhyme with deny, prevent, or need, so that's going to be D. State, same thing here. It doesn't rhyme with the other one, so I need to put an E. But speed and need do rhyme. Rest and best do rhyme, and then wait rhyme. So sonnet. So this one, it looks like an Italian sonnet. I mean, the one last thing the sonnet really needs, and it's super important, it's called a turn, or it's also called a volta. 
and this is a content thing, so you got to read the poem for this one. And when you're writing it, you got to write for this. So a turn is pretty simple. Basically, the poem goes in one direction, then it completely turns, and it typically happens at line nine, line nine or twelve. Not to confuse you, sometimes if you read one and you're like, wait, that just happened at line 13. Well, that means it's at the end of line 12. So that's kind of where it happens. So what does this mean? You go in one direction and you change. So your first part of your point mean, might be something like, I'm not worthy of your love. You're so awesome. You're so great. Whatever it is, right? And then at line, you know, 9 or 12, you're going to turn directions and say something like, I'm going to try to be worthy and do my best and whatever that is, right? So you just change directions completely. When you turn directions, you stay in that new direction for the rest of the poem. That's the only key of a sonnet. So this one, straight up sonnet, that's how I tell that it's a sonnet by looking at that. If I read this poem, I would realize, yeah, it does have a turn. And I'm not going to do that here because I'm just looking at forms. Let's go to a different one. All right, so here I go. Here's a different form, and it already looks slightly different. There's uh, stanzas with three lines in them. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six stanzas. All right, that doesn't look like the sonnet did. And let me count up the lines. One, two, three. Okay, six, nine, 12, 15. All right, 19. Okay, that, that's not a sonnet then because the sonnet had 14 lines, right? So look at this one. And if I have a cheat sheet, I'm going to pull up 19 lines. I'm like, oh, that's probably Villanelle. But I just want to say this. You got to check out everything else. Villanelle has some very specific things about it. Well, I'm going to be like, okay, Villanelle's. Let's check out the number of syllables. Do not go gentle into that good night. All right, there's 10. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. There's 10 again. And if I keep going through, I'll see that this is, you know, 10. Villanelles tend to be 8, 10, or 12 syllables. 10 is probably the most common. But the only trick about it, Villanelles, they should be pretty consistent. So the line length should be pretty consistent. Even if you're doing something like contemporary Villanelle, where you might vary the syllable count a little bit, um, you want to keep the lines roughly the same length. That's how Villanelle traditionally works. So, okay. So I'm feeling pretty good. 19 lines, and it's got 10 syllables. It looks like a Villanelle. The Villanelle has a couple of other really specific things, and I want to check on that. Right, so let's do the rhyme scheme. And that's one of the most important things to tell for a Villanelle. There's no content specific thing for a Villanelle like there is for the turn. But for a Villanelle, I'm gonna go say, okay, let's look, night. All right, night, there's an A. I might come back to this, but I'm gonna keep this there. A, day doesn't rhyme with night, so I'm gonna do B. But then I have light, that does rhyme with it, so I'm gonna say A again. All right, I got A, B, A, so right comes to A, well, day and day. There we go. So I've got B again. And then night. Wait, night was the first one. Do not go gentle like good night. Do not. That whole line repeats. So if you notice, I've been using lowercase letters. But when we have a repeating line or a repeating just a word that repeats, you want to switch to an uppercase. The other way that sometimes this is marked in rhyme scheme is like this. Repeating. It'll do like, sorry, I can't get that in there. Repeating with a big, big R. But for us, in this case, we're going to do big A. So big A means that entire line repeats. That entire line repeats right here, okay? I'm like, okay, automatically I'm thinking Villanelle. Because if you look at a Villanelle form, it's got repeating lines. That's one of its key hallmarks. But let's look bright, all right? Bright, there's an A. Bay, there's a B. And then we come to Rage, Rage Against the Dying of Light. I've already seen light, which is this third line, Rage, Rage Against Dying. So that whole line repeats again. So I got A, but the trick is it's not the same A, so I have to mark this separately. So this is going to be my A1, and this should be superscript, right? A1. Let me do this, see if I can do this quick and easy. Um, fine, there it is. So superscript like this. You'll see it written like that, A1, and this is going to be A2. And I'm going to do that again just for the heck of it. And a superscript. So this is my first repeating line. That's my second one. So this one I come back in. I'm just going to mark it. I'm not going to do it with them all superscript. You guys can see it. And then this is A2. All right. 
I'm feeling pretty good now. So I have flight. Well, that's not a repeating line. It's just A. Way, that doesn't repeat. That's B. Do not go gentle and leg at night. That's the repeating line again. So that's A1. Sight, I have an A. Gay, I have a B. Light, I have another A. I got another A2 because that repeats again, right? A2. All right. And then I have sad height as an A, prey as a B, and then I have a repeating line, A1 again. Oh, darn, I just got went all crazy. <laughs> A1. And then lastly, rage range against dying light, that's my A2 again. So if you see what happens, this one has a lot of repeating lines in it. So literally, you when you write a Villanelle, this is what this is, and I can tell really easily because this has the rhyme scheme of a Villanelle, has the meter of a Villanelle. In the link. So I look at this one, I'm like, okay, it's got a lot of rhyme in it. So it's very important that your your rhyme, your your repeating lines in this one are really good lines. Um, rage, rage against the dying black. This is a really strong line. Thomas here like focused on those. And when they repeat, they really work really well. So as a writer, you want to you know be consistent with the meter as much as you can and make sure you have that repeating line for it. That's the catch of a sonnet and the villanelle. Hopefully this also helps you figure out some of the rhyme schemes for other poems as well. Their process is pretty similar throughout, throughout uh, you know, literature.